Hi, this is Dr. A with a ClinChem review video on amniotic fluid testing. All right, let's talk a little bit about amniotic fluid physiology. So the amniotic sac provides an enclosed environment for fetal development. It provides a cushioning medium for the fetus. It regulates the temperature of fetal environments, allows for fetal, fetal movement, and it serves as a matrix for the influx and efflux of constituents such as glucose, sodium, and potassium. So let's talk a little bit about amniotic fluid collection. It is collected via a transabdominal amniocentesis. So it is an amniotic sac puncture. As you can see, um, you, a provider would have to use a needle to go through you know, abdominal wall and then through the uterus and into the amniotic sac without damaging or hitting the baby, right? And um, pull off some amniotic fluid. And then that, that amniotic fluid can be used to test for congenital diseases, neural tube defects, um, hemolytic disease of the newborn, and fetal pulmonary development, all the main uses of that. So let's talk a little bit about hemolytic disease of the newborn. So the analysis of amniotic fluid is screened for hemolytic disease of the newborn, which is erythroblastosis fatalis, was the first recognized laboratory procedure performed on amniotic fluid. Classically, the absorbance um, to the bilirubin is reported instead of a concentration of bilirubin. Uh, the method consisted of scanning amniotic fluid from 550 to 350 nanometers against a water blank. The common method, which is the method of Lilly, um, requires the plotting of the absorbances at 5 nanometer intervals against wavelengths using a semi-logarithmic paper, and the presence of hemoglobin is identified by its peak absorbance at 410 to 415 nanometers. Now, obviously, what we're doing now for hemolytic disease of the newborn is to um, test the mom uh, to see if the mom is Rh negative and then give her raw gam if she has Rh negative, etc. So that's kind of what's being done now, uh, mostly to screen for this and to prevent, um, you know, the hemolytic disease of the newborn from occurring in the first place. So neural tube defects, that's the other use, another use for amniotic fluid. So screening for neural tube defect now is initially performed using maternal serum. So we draw blood from the mom, usually around somewhere between 16 to 18 weeks gestation. The presence of elevated levels of alpha fetoprotein or AFP is primarily associated with neural tube defects such as spina bifida and anencephaly. Uh, and these usually correlate with a folic acid deficiency. Uh, so it's really important to have good nutrition um, and good inta intake of vitamins and stuff prior to pregnancy, especially at, but especially at the beginning of pregnancy. An open neural tube defect, so such as spina bifida, uh, causes an increase in amniotic fluid alpha fetoprotein, is accompanied also by an increase in mater maternal serum alpha fetoprotein. Spina bifida, also known as meningomyelocele, the bottom of the tube uh, does not fuse. So this is, uh, is an example. Um, encephalocele, the sac containing the brain and the membranes, protrudes through an opening in the skull. And anencephaly, you have lots of parts of the brain and skull. And again, all of these, if the uh, alpha fetoprotein is increased, then you can suspect possibly that there is a neural tube defect. So uh, the protocol for AFP testing to determine the presence of a neural tube defect, defect is generally the following. So you do mater maternal serum alpha fetoproteins, usually in conjunction with uh, HCG and conjugated estriol and inhibit A assays. Um, if that comes back elevated for AFP, you want to repeat AFP. Uh, and then you can do a diagnostic ultrasound, uh, really detailed, and lastly, you can do an amniocentesis for confirmation. And then fetal lung maturity, this is another good reason to do amniocentesis. So, uh, and it's the primary reason for amniotic fluid testing um, now is, again, that need to assess fetal pulmonary maturity. The, uh, respiratory distress syndrome occurs if the lungs are not mature. It has also uh, been referred to as hyaline membrane disease because of the hyaline membrane that's found in affected lungs. 
As the lungs mature, you should see increases in the phospholipid concentrations, particularly the compounds uh, phosphatidylglycerol and lecithin. Um, these form surfactant, and surfactant prevents the alveoli from collapsing when the baby exhales. Assessing fetal lung maturity, or also known as FLM, includes functional assays and quantitative assays. The functional assays provide a direct physical measure of uh, amniotic fluid in an attempt to assess surfactant ability and to decrease surface to the surfactant's ability to decrease surface tension again to keep those alveoli from collapsing. It includes the bubble or shake test and the foam stability index, so where you would shake the amniotic fluid and see uh, the formation of the bubbles and stuff. The uh, quantitative tests include the lecithin spindle myelin ratio, LS ratio, um, plus glycerol testing and lamellar and body counts. So, with uh, if using an LS ratio of 2.0 as an indicator of fetal lung maturity cannot be relied upon to ensure that respiratory distress syndrome will not occur unless you do glycerol levels uh, and you use them to interpret your LS ratio. So, current practice is to perform a glycerol test as a screen if this test is negative or low positive so then indicating uh, that maybe there's not enough of it there then you can do a less than spindle myelin ratio uh, and then for the uh, lamellar body counts so the phospholipids that are produced and secreted by the type 2 alveolar cells in the baby's lungs are released in the amniotic fluid in the form of lamellar bodies and so an increased presence of these guys would then indicate that the the baby's lungs are mature there you know because the more these alveolar cells are there the more of the fossil lipids are produced which indicates more surfactant present uh and so yeah you can do lamellar body counts also and that would be all the different ways that we can test for field lung maturity thank you so much